looking at this question, I need to know in the corner, it does tell us, it gives us a hint what the slant height is. Can somebody describe to me where that is on this particular diagram? Where would the slant height be? What do you think, Austin? Awesome. So the word slant kind of gives it away, right? It's got to it's got to be kind of like on that angle. So really, if I pick this one here, is that the only option I have? Is that the only option? What do you think? What do you think there, Hassan? No, you could either one. Awesome. So I could look this way as well. The way the di diagrams uh, created, it kind of looks like they're trying to get you to use the right one. However, not necessary. But let's assume we use this guy here. And now let's actually label this triangle here. First off, what kind of triangle is this? And how would I know? What do you think, Sophia? It's a right angle triangle. Right angle triangle? What tells you that? Well, because it has a right angle. Does it necessarily, though? Like, does it tell me? Does it guarantee by the diagram that it does? Or are you making that, I don't want to say assumption, but do you know it for some other reason? What do you think? Because normally we have a symbol when there's a right angle. What's that symbol look like? What do you think? A little box. Yeah, a little box. So I'm assuming most of us think that's a right angle. And I would tend to agree with you, but what's your explanation why we can make that assumption? What do you think? It's sitting on a flat base, and it doesn't tell us that it, uh, if this is the slant type, then this must be the direct type. Awesome. I like that. So basically, it, it, it should be a flat base, we would assume, for a cone. And the height should go straight from the middle all the way up to the peak or to the vertex. Okay, so that is going to be a right angle triangle. Now, let's do this thing two ways. First off, let's label our triangle. Where does our 8 centimeter radius go? Where's that going to go? Let's get somebody new. Need a new hand? Need a new hand? Yes, Hannah. Another short line at the bottom. Awesome. So short line at the bottom. Let's get that on there. So we've got 8 centimeters. And how about the slant height? Where's the slant height? Luke? Awesome. Slanted line. Now, quick question that you should be asking yourself, which one or which side is the hypotenuse in this case? Which side? Megan? Awesome. The 20 centimeters. So note, a couple of people asked me while you're working on it, a quick way to identify that, vert, or not the vertex, sorry, but the um, hypotenuse is to go directly across from the right angle. Okay, so we know that's the hypotenuse. Now, if we use the same logic as yesterday where we use the area of squares to try to calculate the answer here, what am I going to do? What would that look like? What do you think? Sophia wasn't even here, but what do you think? Well, C squared equals A squared. Awesome. So she's got a formula. So she's got the C squared equals A squared. Ooh, I like it. You actually did it. You said C squared minus A squared equals B squared? Yeah. Why are you doing that with the formula? Well, because you have to figure out the B squared, so then you take the 20, which is your hypotenuse, which is the C squared, and you subtract it from the A squared. So you get your B squared, and that's why you do uh, A squared minus A squared to get C squared. Nice. Opposite operation. Nice. So you're saying the 8 centimeters is going to be the A squared. Now... Could I also write this like so? Could I write it like this, guys? C squared minus B squared equals A squared. Would that work? Yeah. Is that cool? It certainly would. <laughs> Thank you very much. So Anthony says it certainly would. How about this one, though? What if I did this? How about C squared equals A squared plus B squared? Because that's the actual Pythagorean theorem. Would that work? What do you think? What do you think, Hassan? No, because it doesn't give Awesome. So we have C squared. Now, mind you, we could start there, and then we could rearrange the formula, right? So we've already done that in the previous two. So let's ignore this guy for now. Now, my question originally, though, was how can I use these squares? So remember from yesterday, we said that if we square this side, it gives me that area. If I square this side, it gives me this area. And if I square this side, it gives me the area of that square. So let's quickly go through this and make sure that everybody, especially those who weren't here, understand what we're trying to do. So let's look at the bottom. When I square 8 centimeters, what's the area of that box or that square? What's that going to be? Adam? 64. 
So that's 64 centimeters squared. Okay, so there's the logic right there. We know that 8 centimeters, when we sub that in for B, or for A, depending on what you name it, that guy's going to be 64. So that information's given to us here. How about the uh, hypotenuse, the box off the hypotenuse? What are we looking at there? How about Cameron? Nice. So we have 400 centimeters squared, probably a poor color to use because it looks like it's part of that equation now. However, now that I know those two numbers, what do I need to do to find my missing area over here? What would I do? Anthony? Awesome. So he's doing 400 minus 64. Why does that make sense? Why are we not adding? And notice it's matching the formula that Sophia gave us as well as I think the second one was given to us by, I believe, someone at the back table there. What are you thinking? Why do we have to subtract? Go ahead there, bud. Because if a squared plus b squared equals c squared, then c squared minus b squared is equal a squared is the other way around. Love it. Awesome. How about visually, what would be one reason why? What do you think there, Anthony? The 400 uh, centimeters squared is already the hypotenuse. So hypotenuse minus uh, 64 right there would give us our answer. Awesome. I like that logic as well. Okay. So if we do it this way, what do we get as the area of this box right here? What do we get as that area of that box? Yes. 336. 336 centimeters squared. Now, if we sub all this information in, and we sub it into that formula, so the same idea, we could show that it's 400 centimeters squared minus 64 centimeters squared equals that 336. And what do we have to do to actually find what C is. And actually what I'm going to do is, well, I'm actually going to back this up a little bit and I'm going to show it on a separate line because remember this is equal to B squared and we got 336 equals B squared. So what do I need to do to both sides to get the value of B? What do you think, Hassan? Square root, square root it. Awesome. Do I just square root one side? What do you think? Awesome. So whatever we do to one side, we do to the other. We get a B. And what's B equal to, folks? What is the, what is the side length there, Adam? 18.3. 18.3. Are we all good with that, folks? And we'll say centimeters. Notice, when you square root centimeters squared, you also now have centimeters as your unit, right? So everything all comes out in the wash, which is kind of nice. Now, if I think about this logically, 20 squared is 400. Right? So something slightly lower will be 336. 18.3 seems real reasonable, right? So that's something we should always do and, and double check. All right? Are we good? All right, perfect.